Hello and welcome to a new episode from the Medical Microbiology series. This episode is about one of the most dangerous bacteria that's transmitted through sexual intercourse. It causes serious complications and is the main cause of prostatitis in men and infertility in both men and women. This bacterium is Neisseria gonorrhea, the cause of gonorrhea, also referred to as gonococcus. In 1879, Albert Neisser discovered this bacterium and named it after himself. Neisseria gonorrhea is a gram-negative diplococci, which appears in pairs as kidney or coffee bean shapes and are characterized as being oxidase positive, aerobic and capnophilic, that prefers to grow aerobically in around 5-10% to CO2. Neisseria gonorrhea is a fastidious bacterium that can't grow on simple media and requires specific nutrients to grow, such as blood, serum, and tissues found in enriched medias. It can't grow on blood agar because it can't lyse the hemoglobin present and because blood agar contains growth inhibitors to which N. gonorrhea is susceptible. However, when blood agar is heated to 80 degrees Celsius for 10 minutes, it breaks down the hemoglobin and releases X factor and V factor, which are essential for the growth of Neisseria gonorrhea. This media is referred to as chocolate agar. Chocolate agar is a Muller Hinton agar or tryptone soya agar with 5% sheep blood agar added to make a blood agar which is heated in a water bath as described previously. The newly formed chocolate agar can support the growth of the organisms that can't grow on other media such as Neisseria and Haemophilus. Some antibiotics can be added to chocolate agar such as colistin or trimethoprim which prevents the growth of gram-negative bacteria other than Neisseria. Vancomycin can inhibit gram-positive bacteria or Nystatin can be used to prevent the growth of yeast. All four of these substances are added to chocolate agar to form media known as modified Thea Martin agar, which is considered the best selective agar for the growth of Neisseria. Humans are considered to be the only host for N. gonorrhea and may be found as part of the normal flora in the urogenital tract. It may also be a carrier microorganism from the rectum and for these reasons it's considered to be a sexually transmitted disease which can only be transmitted through intercourse. It causes urethritis in men, which may result in pain during urination, called dysuria, with the release of a yellowish purulent fluid. When these symptoms are noticed, the infection should be treated immediately. Otherwise, it can lead to chronic serious complications such as cystitis, epididymitis, which is infection of the epididymis, in the tube located on top of each testicle, to gather and store sperm. It can also cause prostatitis, infection of the prostate, which secretes a liquid that nourishes and protects sperm during ejaculation and neutralizes the pH of the urine, which may kill sperm during release. Infection in women shows similar symptoms at the start, also causing urethritis, dysuria, and purulent discharge. Although women produce some discharge normally to protect and clean the uterus by removing bacteria and dead tissues. Because of this, infection can easily be mistaken as normal discharge. Around 50% of women carry these bacteria but don't show any symptoms. They're asymptomatic. Disease is usually more easily identified in men as a result of the discharge because they don't typically produce any. In addition to these symptoms, women may also experience abdominal discomfort and dyspareunia. Complications of this disease can be very dangerous and include pelvic inflammatory disease in women, which is an infection of the genitals which spreads to the uterus, fallopian tubes or ovaries. Fallopian tube obstruction causes infertility in women due to destruction of the cells in the tubes which prevents fertilization because sperm is unable to reach the ovaries. Another dangerous complication is ectopic pregnancy, which happens as a result of inflammation of the fallopian tubes. Inflammation can also occur in the peritoneum, which covers the internal organs, including the stomach, intestines and liver, which can cause peritonitis. Peritonitis can lead to Fitzcurtis syndrome, 
which is a rare disorder that happens when pelvic inflammatory disease causes swelling of the tissue around the liver. This may also be called gonococcal perihepatitis or perihepatitis syndrome. During labour and birth, newborn children can be infected with gonococcus, leading to neonatal conjunctivitis carried by the mother. This can lead to blindness in these children, so immediate treatment with an eye ointment containing erythromycin during the first hour after birth is used to prevent N. gonorrhea infection. Vulvovaginitis is another condition that can be caused by this organism. It causes inflammation or infection of the vulva and vagina typically in children or young women. The virulence factors for N. gonorrhea are characteristic of their ability to aid bacterial attachment to the inner genital organs, such as the pili, which are small appendages present on the outer surface of the gonococci, which play an important role in the adhesion to host cells. It also helps to transfer genetic material like plasmids to other species. It can aid in invasion as well as having some antiphagocytic properties and some motility towards certain receptors. Gonococci have some outer membrane proteins such as porin proteins and reduction modifiable protein which extends from the plasma membrane and makes some holes to transfer nutrients to the inside of the bacterial cell. It also has the opacity associated protein which assists in the adhesion of the colonies to the receptors of the host. N. gonorrhea secretes an endotoxin called lipooligosaccharide, which not only helps the gonococci tolerate the environmental conditions, but also makes it able to multiply inside some immune cells, such as phagocytes, which are supposed to break it down. It can also produce IgA protease that inactivates the IgA immunoglobulin, the most important antibody which protects the body from bacteria present on the mucosal membranes in the respiratory and genital tracts. N. gonorrhea is resistant to penicillin and tetracycline, but can also be treated with third generation cephalosporins such as ceftrioxone. Tetracycline, azithromycin and doxycycline can be prescribed alongside ceftrioxone to treat chlamydia which is often co-infecting in gonorrhea patients. I hope you've liked this video and found it helpful. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe. Thanks for watching.